Hello, I'm Dave Ehrenberg, state attorney for Palm Beach County, a.k.a. the Florida lawman here on True Crime MTN. And I'm back here with the great Melba Pearson. Hello, Melba. Hey, Dave, how you doing? I'm doing great. It's great to have you back to talk more about the Alec Baldwin case. And this is the pod where we really get into whether Alec Baldwin should be held accountable on trial, criminally, civilly convicted. Let's get into it. And by the way, thank you for your views out there. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. So Melba, you and I disagree a little bit on this. I'm not sure whether Alec Baldwin should be convicted. I, I, I'm not. But at first, I thought he shouldn't even be charged. But after I saw the evidence in the Hannah Gutierrez retrial, I'm thinking, yeah, there's enough evidence to charge him. After all, he said, I didn't put, pull the trigger, but yet looks like he did on video. Then there's the video of him bossing people around on the set, and it was a chaotic set. One more, one more, one more. I forgot the recall stuff. No, no, right away, right away. Let's reload. Here we go. You know, there's enough evidence, if not to convict beyond a reasonable doubt, at least to get him in front of a jury and let them decide. What do you think, Melba? Yeah, I kind of disagree with you on that one, Dave. Um, and this is to be clear, I'm I'm not like a huge Alec Baldwin fan. I'm, I'm like, he's whatever. I'm very neutral on him <laughs> in terms of his acting. Right. Um, so this is not like, yay, pro Alec. But the reality is being a crappy boss doesn't mean you're criminally responsible. Mm -hmm. Right. And to me, the responsibility lies with the armorer. That's why you hire an expert. You hire somebody who knows about the topic, who knows how to supposedly handle firearms safely, knows the difference between a live and a dummy round, right? And had the ultimate responsibility of loading the ammunition into the weapon. And so she was the one who was supposed to check it and make sure that there were no live rounds. And then she had a supervisor who was supposed to also check the firearm as well before handling it to Alec Baldwin. He is not a firearms expert. So whether he pulled the trigger or he didn't, to me, is not as important from the standpoint of it wasn't his, he wasn't negligent from the standpoint of he believed that there were no live rounds in the firearm. So again, I understand from a gun safety perspective, I'm a gun owner, you know, you're not supposed to point a gun and anything you don't intend to destroy, right? That's 101. But I think from his perspective, Again, he may not be as first on gun safety as, you know, the armorer would be. Uh, secondly, the armorer should be intervening when they're seeing an unsafe workplace where, you know, people are tar using uh, live rounds to do target practice. I, th that's how mis deadly mistakes like this happen. So, again, I don't think that's on Alec Baldwin from a criminal perspective. Now, civilly, all day, every day, he just give the people their money. Just give the people their money. <laughs> well, period. End up. <laughs> fair point on the civil side. I totally agree with you on that one. And he is being sued and he's going to have to pay out something. And, you know, the standard for a successful civil suit is much lower than a criminal case where it's just by preponderance of the evidence. Can you prove that he was negligent? And that's just, you know, 50 percent plus one, essentially, just is more likely than not that he was negligent. And negligence is just a violation of your duty of care. Whereas a criminal case, you got to prove that he was grossly negligent beyond a reasonable doubt. So it is much tougher for prosecutors. But did it not matter that he's not just an actor, but also a producer? I mean, isn't he responsible for the hiring of this unqualified armor? You know? So when you say that she was not up to snuff, yeah, he hired the rainbow haired uh, drug abusing uh, woman, I, I know the cocaine on the set wasn't tested, so it wasn't cocaine, but we know what it was. It had been baking right? powder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was asked him to hide, hide the white baking powder. Right, exactly. I use it to keep my refrigerator fresh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, the fact that he was a producer, again, to me, plays more on the civil side because the and he had a workplace that was fast and loose and maybe he didn't properly screen her, which again goes to civil liability. But I still don't see that connection from a criminal perspective because where's the gross negligence? I mean, she this was her first big job, but she's the daughter of an armorer. I'm, I'm guessing that she must have come with some kind of recommendations, right? I mean, 
So <laughs> he's thinking, okay, maybe I'm going to give this young person a break, you know, let them, they have the training, they have, you know, should have some experience by growing up on these types of sets in the company of, of her father, right? So I see that more as a negligent hiring, and that's not grossly negligent, that's minor negligence, which... I mean, you know, yeah. for criminal purposes, right? I, but yeah, I from agree a with you. Perspective? Yeah, I, I agree. I agree, Mel. But I think that the hiring itself is not grossly negligent. She is the daughter of a well-respected armor. And, and you know, he's an actor. So he's doing what actors do, boss people around. And, you know, he's A-lister. So I, I agree. But I, where I think he has a problem, though, is that he said on camera to whatever – I forgot he was talking to on, on uh, in the media, but he was saying – that he would never pull the trigger. Never. No, he knows better than to do that. Like, essentially, he's setting the bar that if you pull the trigger, you deserve to go down. And yet there's video of him pulling the trigger. And I think he didn't, in his mind, my take is that in his mind, he didn't think he pulled the trigger. And he was pointing the gun at and Helena Hutchins. And apparently, Miss Hutchins was telling him, you pointed at me on the cross draw, but she didn't say pull the trigger. But when you cock it with your thumb, See, look at look. See, I, it's hard not to right. pull mm -hmm. that it's like trigger. A voluntary response, yeah. right? And so I think that unless he breaks down on the stand, and he's definitely taking the stand. You, you're a list no after question. you make your living, right? Convincing people that you're for real. He's going to do that to the jury. But unless he breaks down and says, "I never would have intended. I didn't know I would pull the trigger. I would never do it." And then they can have sympathy for him, or else he's going to look like a liar, though, right? Isn't that a problem? Yeah, I mean, and I think it's also his definitions, right? Because he was saying that he was using a technique called fanning. And so apparently, you know, again, I couldn't, I've never heard of the concept before, uh, you know, again, not a firearms expert, but, you know, in his mind, he's thinking I'm doing X, Y, Z, and that's not pulling the trigger. And he's, you know, assuming that that somehow will give him less liability. Yes and no, because again, it comes back to, at the end of the day, was he grossly negligent in how he handled that firearm? And if in his mind, there's dummy rounds, there's no way that anyone could get hurt, I don't see the gross negligence that would lead to conviction for involuntary manslaughter. But I absolutely see it in the preponderance of the evidence, 50%, you know, 51%, basically. Hey, if he had done something differently, would Helena Hutchins still be here today? Absolutely. Well, no it, it all goes back to the F word, and that's foreseeability, right? Is it foreseeable mm -hmm. that an actor who's also a producer who hires this unqualified, over her head, 24 year old, rainbow haired armor who's partying all the time and then accepts a gun and points it and pulls the trigger at someone that someone could die? And I'd say, yeah, it is foreseeable. Even if he didn't want to, and clearly he didn't want to kill anyone, that's why it's involuntary manslaughter, not manslaughter. You have that video of him pulling the trigger. That's something you should never do. And, and you know, as a gun owner, you should never point a gun and pull a trigger, even if you think the gun is cold. And he was told by a third party, Dave Halls, that the gun was cold. The uh, was a first assistant director. But as an actor, even when you're told, are you supposed to pull the trigger? Now, I, I get where you're not supposed to have to check every gun that you get. I, I get as an actor, that would be impractical to have to like look in and check every gun that's someone else the professional's job but at the same time you point and you shoot at someone man it looks like you're assuming the risk that if someone dies you know you can be charged convicted right i'm not totally there yet but i am now there on the charge that it's a good faith prosecution that you could get a conviction beyond a reasonable doubt but as a juror would i find guilty i don't know i, I i'm with you on that you have any yeah. uh final thoughts on that melba yeah, I mean, again, it, to me, I'm centering the families, you know, the Hutchins family, Joel Souza, who was also impacted by this and was severely injured. You know, this is very traumatizing for them. It's very traumatizing for everyone who was on the set who witnessed, you know, the the horrible death that occurred from this. So we can't lose focus of them in all of this, but we also can't let celebrity cloud our judgment in this as well. You know, celebrities, they are often seen as getting special treatment, but there's sometimes when they get treated worse because you get some folks on the jury who are like, I don't like these big Hollywood stars coming in our community, think they're better than the rest of us. You know, so- Driving up our real estate prices. <laughs> what, what is that? 
driving up our real estate prices. Oh, you're right. Exactly. Are, are you doing Yellowstone to me? Is that a Yellowstone? <laughs> totally. <laughs> oh, I hope we don't have to pay like a copyright fee or some intellectual property. We just quoted Yellowstone. But <laughs> um, no, it's a uh, it, it's that could happen, too. So there are some ways that he could be treated worse than the rest of us, especially he's going to be on trial in New Mexico. That's yeah. That's what you're talking about. He's not going to be a trial in uh, in Hollywood or New York City. So we'll see where this goes. Yeah, um, it's going to be very interesting. It That's will. Sure. Melba, you're always so interesting. And I appreciate the give and take. And I look forward to have you back on the pod. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, everyone. That's Melba Pearson. And you're here on True Crime MTN. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And we will see you next time.